Hey everybody, I've had a chance to check out the latest from Xiaomi, the Yi M1 digital camera. Now, if you're not familiar with Xiaomi Corporation, that's understandable. They do make cell phones. They've made quite a name for themselves under the Mi branding. In this case, however, they've branched out and they're attacking the digital camera market under the Yi branding. They uh, made quite a splash earlier this year with the Yi 4K action cam. And I gotta say, that for about $250, $260, this is hands down the best action cam there is, and that includes the new Hero Black 5. But we're here to talk about the M1, which is their new mirrorless camera. Um, it's actually, it's based on the Micro Four Third standard. It uses a Sony 20 megapixel sensor. It's actually the same sensor you'll find in the Panasonic GX8, which is quite a good camera. It uh, has actually excellent build quality but notably there's almost no function buttons on the device at all you've got two right here and right here plus one dial uh, that's about it other than that you've got mode and you've got the shutter release there isn't much to it but that's because there's a touch screen and they expect you to do all of your activities through the touch screen and that's a good and bad thing we'll talk about that in a moment now the camera comes in three kits. You get a kit lens, no matter how you buy it. Now for $500, you get the camera and you get the kit lens. It's a 12 to 40 millimeter, pretty run of the mill, actually a bit below average kit lens. Uh, for $600, you can have the camera plus the 42 and a half millimeter uh, F1.8 lens. That's a better lens, but it is still very much a kit lens. It actually has no manual focus control at all, which is very bizarre. For $700, you actually get the camera plus both lenses. There is no option to buy the body only. Now, as I mentioned, there is a touch screen on the back. It's 720 by 480, fairly responsive, reasonable brightness. You can see it, um, but it does not articulate at all. Now, the camera does shoot five frames per second in JPEG mode. It seems a little slower and raw to me. It does support a shutter speed of uh, 60 seconds to 1 4,000th, and it's a contrast detection only system. There are no phase detection points here at all, so focusing is fairly slow, although it is actually quite accurate. Also, the camera does support 4K video, albeit only at 30 frames a second and a maximum record time of seven and a half minutes. And for raw photos, it does use Adobe's DNG format. All right, let's jump into how the camera works. In the interface, you see the metering mode on the upper left, followed by the ISO value. Uh, right now it's at 640. Then on the upper right, you see the drive mode. Well, right now we're in continuous drive mode. Uh, you see the autofocus, which is set to single, and we are in full automatic mode. On the bottom, you can see your white balance, the uh, size of the picture you're going to take, in this case, 20 megapixel picture, the number of pictures remaining, uh, whether Bluetooth is on or off, it is on, and whether or not you are charging. This camera uh, will charge while it is on if you hook it up to a USB charger. Now, also what you see on the left-hand side are the uh, f-stop, shutter speed and exposure value and you can see that they are grayed out and that's because we're in full automatic mode when you switch to different modes uh, for example program you can see that the uh, these options change colors now the uh, ev just turned red and what that means is that uh, everything else is automatic but uh, the exposure value can be adjusted by the top dial uh, which i am doing right now Switching over to aperture priority mode, you can see that the f-stop is now red, meaning that it is controlled by the top dial. You can change that temporarily by clicking, for example, the exposure value and adjusting it. It will automatically switch back to the f-stop after a few moments. Switching over to shutter priority, you can see that the uh, shutter speed is now controlled by the top dial. I can temporarily change that again to exposure value um, and it will switch back uh, by itself. In full manual mode, you can have the top dial control f-stop or shutter speed, and it will remember that setting. By default, choosing your focus point is accomplished by tapping the screen on what you want to focus on. Now, it won't actually run the focus, it simply changes the focus point. So now, if I focus, uh, you can see that my focus point has been set. If I want to select something over here, again, touching the screen doesn't actually focus it. You 
decide where you want to focus, and then you have to hold the shutter button halfway down. Now that is settable in the menu setting, and that's where we're going to go next. The menu options are brought up by a quick swipe to the right, and uh, each option is clickable. So let's start with ISO. Uh, we can select all the way down to ISO 25600. I definitely wouldn't go that far. White balance options are pretty complete from auto all the way to selecting your own value in Kelvin. Metering modes are about what you'd expect. Multimetering, spot metering, and center weighted. In focus mode, you get your single continuous manual and focus peaking. That works nicely. Touch shooting. Now, uh, I talked to you just a moment ago about uh, touching somewhere in the image and uh, it, it sets the focus point, but it doesn't actually focus the camera. Doing touch shooting actually does do this. However, it works a little strangely. In the manual, it says that it will focus and take a picture all at the same time. However, in practice, this is not true. All it does is focus the lens when you touch where you want it to go. So let's pop back and uh, you can see it uh, focuses, 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 but it hasn't actually taken a picture. Uh, if I do take a picture, if I do take a picture, there you go. Now, the problem is, is that you focused it, but then you, when you took the picture, it also focused again. So, you know, that just doesn't work very well. Moving on, we have face detection that works exactly as you'd expect. Uh, HDR actually is a special shooting mode, and you'll see that the uh, ISO and white balance and uh, drive mode all turn off. So back in drive mode, we have single, continuous, uh, and of course delays, uh, as you would expect on a normal camera. Connection setup, that's for your uh, Wi-Fi. To get to the rest of the options, you flick up. And we have time lapse. Now this actually shoots a video. Uh, you can choose your video settings, and this is sort of one of the downsides. Um, you can't choose 4K at 24p. I'm not sure why they did that. The camera's capable of 4K. It should really allow you to do 24p. You can do 1920 at 24p, but for some reason not 4K at 24p. Uh, you have some basic setup options here, including the LCD brightness, and actually the LCD is not terribly dim. Uh, it's not the greatest in the sun, but I can see it. You can choose your color space. You can choose whether or not the camera auto powers off after a certain amount of time. Uh, you have uh, bracket modes. Uh, this is for doing uh, manual HDR or other types of special shots. Uh, you can choose your file format. And they have, uh, you know, several JPEG options. They also have RAW, but they do not have RAW plus JPEG, which many people use quite often. You can choose your image aspect ratio, image quality. Now, they do have an odd um, 50 megapixel option, but that's just an interpolation. I would not recommend using that. Simply set it to 20 megapixels and leave it at that. You do have a flash mode, however, the camera does not have a built-in flash, so that's kind of useless at this point. Card setup, that's just for formatting your SD card. Uh, you have an autofocus assist lamp uh, that you can choose to use or not. Uh, auto playback, that's if you click a picture that it automatically displays for a moment afterward. And uh, that's about it. That's all there is in those, in those menus. There's uh, uh, quite a lot that, that certainly Xiaomi needs to add. Now, if we swipe the other way, the camera does have some color options, including standard, portrait, vivid, natural black and white, and high contrast black and white. And that's really about it for the normal operation of the camera. Uh, we do have a couple more modes, one of which being a panorama mode. Uh, when you uh, press the shutter, it will ask you to continue to pan around, uh, as it does on most cell phones. You also have a scenes mode, and in scenes mode, the right side menu uh, becomes a list of scenes uh, that will automatically adjust your camera. So sports mode or uh, sunset mode, etc., will adjust your camera to help you take a better shot in those situations automatically. Now let's get into some of the limitations, and there are many. Uh, first of all, there's no built-in flash, and for a camera which is targeting the low-end market, that's actually pretty surprising. It's one thing to learn about photography, but it's another thing to instantly have to invest in an off-camera flash. 
Now, the lack of physical buttons makes navigating the device kind of hard. No matter how fast you are with the touchscreen, there are just some things that are awkward to do. For example, getting a hold of the ISO requires you to go into the settings menu uh, even to access it. You're not going to find a GPS in here, you're not going to find an electronic viewfinder, yeah, and you're not going to find a whole lot of other things which are very, very common on all of its competitors. Now, actually, I was interested in the camera from the video perspective because I thought, well, hey, this might be a cheap way to have a dedicated camera for YouTube videos or whatnot, but no dice there. The 4K video is limited to 75 megabits a second, a bit less than Sony and other competitors. There is no live HDMI out, so if you wanted to take a feed from the camera to like an Atmos Ninja or, or other device, you can't do that. Again, you can't do 24 frames a second, which is very odd because they do have a 24 frame a second mode in uh, full HD, just not in 4K. The seven and a half minute record time limit in 4K is a bummer. Uh, there is live autofocus, but it's too slow to be useful. Oh, and by the way, I mentioned that uh, video rate recording is limited to 75 megabits, but that's only for 4K. In 1080p mode, your maximum record bitrate is uh, 30 megabits a second, and in 24p mode, it's actually 15 megabits a second, which is just terrible. Now, Xiaomi has been marketing this as the most connected camera, and there is a phone app. Um, however, all it allows you to do is download the pictures that are in the camera and or post them to social network sites. That's not very connected as far as I'm concerned. There are no remote controls currently. Uh, they do say that they're adding that in a later firmware update, but by the time the firmware update comes, more than likely there will be other competitors in the market. And actually, uh, as this video is being recorded near Thanksgiving, already a lot of competitors have dropped their prices. So for example, the Panasonic G7 now sells for $500 with a kit lens. Actually, it's a slightly better kit lens and the camera by and large is better on almost every metric. Um, there's also the newer GX85 camera, which is a couple hundred dollars more, and honestly, I think it's a much better camera. In every way, it has in-body stabilization, it has, uh, well, it just, it has everything that you would expect from a camera of the $700 category. Uh, and I would definitely recommend uh, one of those two Panasonics over the Yi at its current level of development. Now, this is clearly a good camera. It will take a good picture. It'll actually take a picture that rivals my uh, A6300, which is sitting off to the side there. The, like I said, the only problem with it is that it's, it's incomplete. I think Xiaomi has a long way to go with the firmware and the interactions, and I think really they need to design a, a device that's just better. Now, one of the great things about the Micro Four Thirds standard, like the Sony E-mount standard, is that you have plenty of ways to adapt vintage lenses by way of an adapter. That has allowed me to do a few uh, photo comparisons between the Sony A6300 and the Yi uh, using a common lens, in this case the Canon 1.4 50mm lens. You can see those pictures on the Photon Army website anytime. Final thoughts. The E has excellent build quality. It will take a very good picture. It's got a great sensor. However, that's sort of where all the positives end. Unlike its superlative sister, the uh, 4K action cam, the Yi uh, just feels incomplete in just about every way. When this camera was released in China, it was released for the equivalent of about 330 US dollars. And at that price point, it made a lot of sense. People who are introductory photographers or people who wanted to have an interchangeable lens camera but uh, wanted the convenience of a point-and-shoot system. The camera makes perfect sense for those folks. At uh, $500, however, $500 up to $700, there are competing cameras that are just much better. The Panasonic G7, the Panasonic GX85 with its in-body stabilization, these are simply better cameras. Uh, they do have a slightly smaller image sensor at 16 megapixels, but uh, trust me, you won't miss the extra four megapixels. Now, don't count Xiaomi out yet. Uh, their action cam took a couple iterations to get right. The M1 may be starting a bit behind, but I have no doubt that the M2 is going to be competitive. Skip this for now, but I have a feeling they'll be back with something amazing. And I'll see you next time.